Welcome to AIN Debrief, where we take a deeper look at the most important or interesting aviation story of the past week with the AIN editor who covered it. I'm AIN News Editor Chad Trotvetter. This week, I explain what it was like to attend the Sun and Fun Aerospace Expo in Lakeland, Florida. This was the first large-scale in-person general aviation event to be held since the pandemic took hold 13 months ago. Many people from other show organizers were watching closely to see how things went so they can prepare to hopefully hold their events later this year. So actually, we're just going to flip the script a little bit this week. Uh, since I was at Sun and Fun this, uh, earlier this week, Matt is going to actually ask me questions instead of me asking somebody else questions. So, Thanks, Chad. And I'm speaking with news editor Chad Troutbetter about what his experience was like at the Sun and Fun Expo this week. The uh, first live show that's that uh, we've been able to go to uh, after being cooped up for a whole year. So, Chad, what was it like to get out there and see people and smell airplanes and be in the sun? Well, it would you know everybody said that you know they just couldn't couldn't wait to get back to see people again. So, you know that was the main. Um, you know, it, it seems like there's a lot of pent up demand for in person shows. People definitely want to get back and see people in person. You know, aviation, you know, is a people business. You know, a lot of people, um, you know, have deep, you know, deep ties in this industry. They have a lot of friends. Um, you know, they like to do hands-on uh, product demonstrations. Um, you know, uh, AIN, uh, our, our managing director, uh, flew up yesterday and uh, we went over to the Garmin booth and he had some issues with his, uh, uh, I think, G600 unit that uh, he had some questions. And we went over to the booth. They put us up on one of the demo um, demo units over there. You know, and the, um, you know, one, of their, one of the Garmin guys were, you know, helping him to, you know, work out issues that um, he was having with the uh, approach, you know, some of the approach features and stuff. So, you know, we were able to do that in like five minutes, you know, and he's been having these, you know, minor glitches for, you know, for several months. And, you know, it's just not the same as, you know, talking to somebody, you know, over chat or, or on Zoom or even just over the phone. You know, just having somebody right there and, and demonstrating something to you is is pretty important. Uh, but overall, it was uh, a fairly typical show. I mean, uh, there was lots of airplanes out Outside of the uh, static display, uh, the hangars, there you have four hangars with uh, exhibitors and doors. Um, most of the slots were taken. There were, there were some significant uh, you know, empty space in some of the hangar areas. You know, a couple 10 by, you know, 10, by 10 booths here or there. Um, some in, in clusters that were unoccupied. Um, the organizer said about uh, exhibitors were down about 21% uh, from 2019. Of course, there was no show last year, so they're up, you know, exponentially over that. Um, but, uh, you know, everybody seemed to, to you know, really want to get out and um, take a look at airplanes and see them fly and, uh, you know, look at products. And it seemed like people were there to buy too. Um, you know, we, I talked to uh, the people over at Piper and uh, De Hair, um, and uh, they they both said that you know they're seeing a lot of interested buyers. Uh, you know, in previous shows there was a lot of tire kick, tire kickers. Uh, this year they said that there are serious leads. I don't know if anybody really buys an airplane at you know one of these shows, uh, but you know they said that there's a lot of people interested. Um, and it's, it's resulting in a lot of, you know, a lot of good conversations at the show. Was there anything new and different at the show or was it just kind of like, okay, we're here. It's great to be here and we're just going to enjoy being at a live show and s seeing all our friends for a change. Um, there was some new products here or there. Um, maybe I should talk about some of the exhibits, uh, you know, Garmin, Avidine, you know, they were just, they had their uh, indoor, they were, they were always in the hangars. So they had their indoor displays. Uh, they had, 
just as much, just as many of their demo units set up as previous shows. Uh, lots of people around. Um, you know, they were like we were over at Garmin, just like uh, you know, Avidan does the same thing where they'll walk th- walk through. Uh, you know, people who come by come by and want to see how their units work, or already have one and have a problem with it, and want to know how to do something. You know, this or that on it. Uh, so you know, they were pretty much business as usual. Uh, Garmin actually had a pretty good setup to try to control the crowd a little bit over their booth. They had little tents of barriers. So uh, to actually get to the demo units, you actually had to be invited in by one of their, uh, you know, one of their uh, booth uh, people. And then they opened up the little uh, tents of barrier and let you back. And then they would take you to one of the demo units. Uh, Avidine, it was just open as usual, uh, you know, no, no real control over it. So, it, you know, it, it got a bit of a crowd around it uh, at times. Uh, and then there was the complete opposite. Uh, I don't want to single anybody out, but um, the, uh, the Boeing companies, uh, which is Jeppesen and Forflight, uh, they were technically there. They each had uh, back-to-back uh, uh, booths. They had a they had a thirty by ten booth, so they had a basically a wall put up between them. And one side had uh, information about Jeppesen and a video screen uh, about the Jeppesen products. And the opposite side had a four flight uh, companion, which, you know, just uh, some information on, on the board with us, with another video playing on that side, but they had nobody there that could ask, answer questions or, um, you know, there was no, it was an unmanned booth. Um, and ditto for uh, uh, text run aviation. Uh, they have an outdoor outdoor exhibit. Uh, they brought a caravan. It was locked up. Uh, they did put a pair of st- a steps up there so you could go up and look inside, but you couldn't get inside. Um, and then they had these. They had a um, a big video playing uh, over there, and then they had these little uh, octagonal. I call them little. They look like little UFOs. Uh, and it had a QR code on it, and you could you could scan it with your phone, and it took you to a virtual walkthrough of the airplane that was on that little uh, that little thing. And so they had one for the Baron, one for the Citation M2, and one for the Bonanza. Then again, there was nobody there to answer any questions whatsoever. They had two security guards to make sure you didn't break the caravan, uh, and that was it. And the security guards were from a local company. And they don't. They they don't know a caravan from any other airplane, so they couldn't help you. So it sounds like the the model of having a an actual exhibit, but with nobody there, just really didn't fly very well. No, and it, it, to be honest, there wasn't. You know, the most I've seen it. I saw it one time over at the uh, Textron exhibit was three people. Um. The four flight and the Jeppesen were empty every time I walked past. Uh, and, you know, contrast that with uh, De Hair, who had a, uh, a TBM 940 there uh, that you could go through. And they also had a Kodiak 100. Uh, they didn't have a Series 3 there. They only had a Series 2 uh, because they're not, they don't have a Series 3 demonstrator yet. They just delivered the first Series 3. Uh, I think late last month or early this month. But um, so, you know, at any given time, there was at least a dozen or, you know, maybe even 25, 30 people, you know, actively looking at their products over there. And same for Piper. There was always a, a good crowd over there. People were interested. Piper had a pretty full contingency there. They had an M600 um, and then all the way down to their their pit, single piston trainers. So how did they handle letting people into the airplane? Did you have to line up and then they were not just letting a bunch of people? I mean, they don't, they do that at any show anyway, right? Yeah. Well, this show has always been a little more informal. Uh, Cessna, you know, Textron has always uh, kind of controlled access to their airplanes. Um, you know, they'll, they'll put a chain up over there. They kind of, it's a little more controlled this time. Um, you know, they're, they're trying to, you know, sanitize the aircraft in between um, 
you know, people going into them. So they weren't quite as open as they normally are. Usually the Kodiak is very open. You can just kind of stomp through the, the, the cabin if you want. Um, this time it was a little more controlled, but you know, that's, that was, uh, you know, given the, given that we're still in a pandemic, I think that was pretty sensible. Yeah. I mean, I think it makes sense, but so what was your overall feeling? You spent two days there and the show's still going on today, but did you feel like, okay, shows are finally coming back and we're going to, we're going to move ahead. Yeah. I think, uh, we were talking about this before, but, uh, Boca Air, Boca Aviation Maintenance, uh, they had an outdoor exhibit. Um, they had a little banner on their, um, on one of their, uh, 10 by 10, you know, little, little, uh, overhead tent things and it said i just want to be i just want to make it to sun and fun and i think that kind of um summed up the, the mood of everybody you know everybody wanted to um make it somewhere where they could see friends they could see you know see actual hardware you know go get you know their their um any questions answered they have about you know hey i want to put a you know, this box on my airplane, you know, can I do that? How much is it going to cost? You know, everybody kind of cabin fever, um, you know, and just, just wants to get out. So, so Florida doesn't have a mask mandate right now statewide, but there were some, some uh, pandemic precautions at the show. How did that go? Well, so let's go over what uh, the pandemic precautions were first. Uh, so the, the show organizer, the Sun and Fun organization, uh, they uh, basically said, you know, outside, just, you know, social distance, just social distance. If you can't do that, then wear a mask. Um, and inside the buildings, it was supposed to be a mandatory mask. And while you're also social distancing in there and they were going to to do that, they were gonna, they were going to control the crowd flows in and out of the of the hangers so that, you know, to limit the amount of people in there. So, uh, but, uh, so they initially, they were enforcing the, the rules in the buildings. Uh, but they, uh, the Sun Fund organization uses a lot of volunteers, um, at these show, you know, at their show, annual show. And, um, so the volunteers were left to enforce the, uh, the mask mandate, you know, at the entryway of the, uh, of the hangars, there was a couple doors to get in, uh, front, back and side for the most part. Um, but they were getting so much blowback, um, from people who did not want to wear masks, uh, you know, without the state mandate, it makes it very difficult to enforce. Um, and, uh, so by midday on Tuesday, which was the opening day of the show, uh, they, they communicated to the volunteers just to not even enforce the uh, mask mandate anymore. So, um, by Tuesday afternoon, the, uh, I'd say going through the hangars, maybe a quarter of the people were, re- were wearing masks. Uh, there was definitely not a lot of social distancing going on in the hangars. Um, you know, I saw a lot of people shaking hands, um, there's not a lot of sanitizer stations, it, you know, the sanitizer stations were kind of hard to find. Um, some of the, some of the booths did have hand sanitizer on hand. Uh, but you know, it was, if you wanted to find hand sanitizer, it was, uh, it had to be deliberate. It wasn't, uh, just like, Oh, Hey, there it is. Uh, you actually had to go actively looking for it. So, um, yeah, it's, it was a little disappointing to see people not adhering to, you know, the rules that that were put in place. Uh, you know, everybody knew what the rules were. They were posted on the website before. Um, they were clearly marked um, upon entry to the hangars. Uh, they did have signs outside uh, here and there saying, you know, make, you know, social distance six feet. Uh, but you know, real the reality was is that they. They just couldn't control that. What's your overall comfort level for going to live events now after doing this one? Well, I mean, um, a 
common phrase you heard from people, not everybody, but you know, it was that, Oh, I'm fully vaccinated. Um, you know, before you met them, um, uh, I, I've only became eligible, uh, two weeks ago to get my first dose. Um, so I'm still in between, uh, my first and second dose. So I'm not fully vaccinated. So it was a little, a uh, little concerning that people weren't really, you know, um, trying to take the, the basic health measures. Um, but, you know, by the next show, you know, I, I imagine that, you know, we're going to be, um, you know, the next show really is Oshkosh. And by the end of June, I, I think everybody who wants to be vaccinated at that point is going to be vaccinated. So, um, <clears throat> so I, you know, I really don't see that they're going to have to, um, you know, hopefully we'll get to the uh, herd immunity, herd immunity uh, stage of this vaccination by uh, that point. Cause I, I just don't see any way for EAA to have any control over enforcing, you know, any kind of mask or social distancing mandates. It's just impossible. Yep. It sounds like we're transitioning back to that uh, type of protocol. So I guess we'll just have to see how it goes. But anyway, we're glad you were able to go and see what it was like and tell, tell everybody about it, Chad. Yeah, it was a interesting show. Uh, like, like I said, there wasn't a whole lot of new stuff there. Um, I found a little engine company out of uh, Ontario, Canada, that's working on some uh, UAS and some actually a VTOL uh, for the UAM market. But really other than that, there wasn't any, um, you know, breaking news there, but it was, you know, it was good to see everybody and, um, you know, just have that, that in-person interaction again, you know, the face to face is very important. So. Absolutely. Thank you, Chad. We appreciate your uh, input. All right. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for listening to AI and debrief. Another podcast episode will air next Friday. In the meantime, go to www.ainonline.com for the latest aviation news from AIN.